If aliens are engineering us, then why take so much time? Let's just assume that non-human intelligence is real and that modern humans were created by these entities. They have been here long before us and are all over the planet, constantly monitoring us. Let's also assume they have been here since the origination of hominids on the planet we now call Earth. If we are genetically engineered to fulfill a purpose, then why are they waiting so long for us to evolve? How long is long for them? The abduction cases seem to provide us with the most records of actual conversations with non-human intelligence of alien origin. The conversations tell us that the average alien species lived for several hundred years, maybe even a thousand, but several thousand or even a million? This seems much less likely for biological entities than for an artificial intelligence. If we are a purpose-engineered species, then what is our purpose? Are we here to be gold miners for the Anunnaki? Containers for alien souls? Are they here simply to research us? Perhaps we're here for entertainment, or a source of food, or are we a result of a general panspermia program? What are the pros and cons of likelihood for each of these scenarios? Were we engineered to be gold miners? The basis of this idea revolves around the value and scarcity of gold. It can be used for a variety of very valuable products and processes. One idea is that the ancient Anunnaki created us to mine this precious resource for them. A pro for this idea is that a species that is purpose-built for a certain task makes sense as we have certain breeds of dogs that we have bred for particular purposes. A con for this idea, a species that is capable of interstellar travel would most likely have the ability to synthesize materials or have found dense sources of them by mining the cores of dead stars. The next scenario is containers. According to this theory, we have been bioengineered to provide a space for alien species to live when their current container dies. The idea is that humans have three planes of existence, and one of them, our soul, does not have a timeline associated with it. Apparently, we don't use this plane of existence, and that is why we're supposed to be containers for them. The alien entities are frustrated because we are still not developed enough to be worthy containers. A pro for this idea is that it provides some explanation of why somebody would put energy and time into engineering us. A con for this idea is, why do some modifications and then wait to watch us evolve? Why not create the finished product? The third scenario would be for research. The idea with this is that the alien presence has always been here and is planet-wide. Whether or not they created us, they are studying our development and have limited interaction with us so as not to pollute our development. This is an interesting one as it would follow Star Trek's prime directive to not interfere or intervene with people who are not ready. A pro for this idea is that we can relate to it as we ourselves will travel across the planet to study a species of ant that's unaware that is located within a political boundary of another species. This also nicely accounts for the mutilation phenomena. A con for this is, why would they interfere with our evolution if they're trying to study us? If they wanted to study one of their creations, they could simply do it at home or in a lab. The fourth scenario would be for entertainment. Why would a superior advanced civilization be interested in us? We could be one of the more interesting shows in the universe. Think of The Simpsons, but with nuclear weapons. A pro for this is that it's plausible that other civilizations of various levels of development would find us fascinating. Perhaps we developed some different kind of technology. There are abduction reports that indicate some of the alien species lack empathy and are fascinated by our attachment to each other. Con for this is that an advanced species capable of interstellar travel would have many things to occupy themselves with than a lower level species mired in conflict and resource competition. Scenario number five is food. Some of the abduction reports and craft retrieval information indicates that some aliens may consume bodily fluids for sustenance instead of eating solid foods. A pro for this idea is that it does account for the high levels of bodily fluids drained from animal corpses associated with cattle mutilation reports. A con for this is that if they're capable of interstellar travel, surely they can culture such simple nutrient fluids in a laboratory instead of harvesting wild creatures. And the final scenario we have is that of panspermia, spreading of life throughout the universe. In this scenario, a non-human intelligence is spreading life throughout the universe on a microbial level and is okay with waiting vast amounts of time for the results. A pro for this idea is that we've already determined that various forms of microbiology can survive the rigors of space and that there may be seeds of life circulating throughout the universe. A con for this idea is that if a non-human intelligence wanted to spread life throughout the universe and was capable of doing so, why would it use a method that takes so much time as it would exceed the lifetime of currently imaginable biologics? 
Although these scenarios are interesting views into why another species would engineer us, it does not account for what we're witnessing. If another species is capable of interstellar travel and biological engineering, why would they go to all this trouble and then wait all this time? We're probably talking about multiples of their lifetimes as well. Why not just produce a final product that's purpose-built for a particular task? Why? Please let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing.